Join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2011. I don't know what situation you got, but if you can find it in the Word that there's a way out, the first thing you need to do is to conceive the Word, and now it's just a matter of time. You are on your way to manifestation. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Cardiff on the 26th and 27th of March, Manchester on the 7th and 8th of May, Nottingham on the 11th and 12th of June, Bradford on the 24th to the 26th of June, Birmingham on the 22nd to the 24th of July, and Sheffield on the 17th and 18th of September. You were born here. You were born sound. You were born to be the head and not the tail. You were born for everything you touched to turn to gold. You were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle and not be beneath but above only. Glory to God. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 0845602770. Email info at elshadaitoday.com or log on to our website at www.elshadaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2011. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. All I need is this sling and a few stones and I will take. And I love the thing when you read it, David. Can you imagine David, the little man, coming out to fight the big dude? And Dave, you'd think David, if you, you and I were David, we'd be going out like this. And it's as if David, right, who is this uncircumcised Philippine? Who is this uncircumcised? Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. No, I'm not saying that to you, by the way. I'm sure you are hard enough. But David knew that this opposition had been judged. Who's opposing you? Who's keeping you down? Because there is a first word that then declares the end from the beginning that means those who try and oppose you, you can circumvent them. Those who lie about you, the Lord will vindicate you. There, 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 are, there are words that God will speak. And I, it's, it's, but the question is, do you know them? That's why, that's why this thing is so important. This thing is full of first words. But as long as for you this thing remains... Oops. As long as that's all that means to you, what you have at your disposal is something that will never mean anything to you. And you will spend your life wondering, where is God? And one day you'll realize, God was there all along. And it wasn't even as if God didn't know how to deal with it. God was not only there all along, God had also fixed the result all along. You know the Bible says, now let me show you this process as we, we'll probably only look at two scriptures and then we're done. By the way, is this helping anybody today? Yes. Somebody say this with me. My God. My God. No, come on, say, say it like he really is your God. Say, my God. My God. Regardless, of like. Regardless of what it looks like. He loves me. He, loves me. he designed me. He, designed he me. has the first word. He the first and he'll have the last word. The last word. Now the scripture says, Amen. Romans 10 verse 17, that faith comes by hearing. Hearing by Jerry Springer? Hearing by Oprah Winfrey? Hearing by CNN? Hearing by Sir Alex Ferguson? Certainly not. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing... Now we know that the scripture also says that you and I, the just shall, shall live by... And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you and I, we've got to live a life called faith. Right. And without faith, we can't please God. I want to please God. Yeah, when I get before him, I want to see a big smile on his face and I want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. But faith only comes one way. Through the word. 
Faith comes through the Word. When the Word comes, it produces faith. You know, whenever you're feeling down, whenever you're feeling slightly depressed, whenever you're feeling despondent or disillusioned, can I just say how I feel it? That is the best time to come and hear me preach. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, that sounds like quite an arrogant thing to say. No, it's got nothing to do with me. When things, when things aren't working in your life, and I know this is true because it, I've been there, when things seem at odds, the best place you can be is not at home like a zombie just flicking through the channels. You spend 20 minutes going through your 900 channels and you, you, it takes you so long to get through them. You think, well, it's taken me so long to get through them. I might as well start going through them all again because maybe a program has started in the time it's taken me to get through. And then you go through another 20 minutes. Nothing's on. And then maybe you'll find some foolishness and don't let me go there. Mm -hmm. And all along, the best place for you would have been in the house of the Lord. That's right. Why? Because even when things don't seem to be working, you can still put yourself in a position for faith to come. And when your faith comes, you know, it, we're going to find out in a moment, it's when your faith comes, it is always in line with the word and the one who has the first word yes, that's right. has already spoken. Faith comes by hearing. Yes. Hearing by the word of God. Yes. So therefore, if it is really faith, according to the book of James chapter 2, we should be able to see some corresponding action. Yes. Oh, Brother Mark, I'm in faith for this and I'm in faith for that. You know, churches, churches can be full of what I call good pretenders. You know, come to church looking the part and come to church in our suits and, and, and looking, looking like the anointed man of God or looking like the anointed woman of God, looking like we've got no care in the world. And we, you know, we bump into people, we say the right things and, 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 and everything just looks fine and dandy and it looks right but you know when you go home things aren't all that and so if it's really faith there has to be some corresponding action but it can only be really faith if it came from the word you know God does not respond to desperate people oh Lord I'm desperate for you you don't have to be desperate for somebody who has already made himself available God does not respond to desperation he responds to faith but faith comes by hearing yes, sir. and hearing the word. Now, this is why I say this, because there is a process as we head to a close. There is a process that can expedite the time between the first word and the last word with regards to whatever it is that you face. You know, sometimes we talk about the first word and the last word and, and we, we mistakenly think, well, that's just to do with, you know, I'm born, I've had the first word and then the last word will be when I cross over onto that crystal shore and, and that's the last word. And no, no, do you know, there are, there are situations which you are facing right now where God himself has already decreed a first word and there can be a last word and this is the good news, the last word could happen at any time. You know, there are some things that you're sweating right now, you've sweated for years. And yet God, if we, if we know what it is and how he works and we get that first word, you could be living in the reality of your last word by this time tomorrow. That's right. Family working right by this yeah, time tomorrow. Right. Kids born again by this time tomorrow. Mm. Body working right by this time tomorrow. Mm. You know, God, God has got no problem with time. It's you and I who have the issue with time. You only have to look around this room to look and realise, my word, we're all getting older. <laughs> and yet God, who's outside of time, he's got eternity to wait if he needs to. And so it's to our advantage to understand how this thing works. This thing works. And so it said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith then needs corresponding action. So let me show you how that fits with the first word and the last word, and then we're done today. Are you still with me today? Yes, the book of Acts, where we started from, but we're going to go to chapter, back a couple of chapters, the book of Acts, chapter 14. This will be our last scripture today. The book of Acts, chapter 14. I'm glad you came today. Yes, 
God has the first word and he has the last word. Praise God. We're going to read an account here in Acts 14. It'll be our last scripture. The Apostle Paul on his first ministry tour, this one with, with Barnabas. And he goes from place to place and he ends up at a place called Lystra. And we're about to read a miracle here <clears throat> from verse 8. And it says this, And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting. And he was a cripple from his mother's womb. And he had never walked. Now just imagine that situation. Here was a guy who had not even had the privilege of walking in his early years. Here was a guy who never knew what it was to walk. I mean, it actually says here that even while he was in his mother's womb, he was crippled. A man who, when he was born, or a boy as he grew up, was probably just sat there at the side while everybody else, or you know what it's like, all the kids playing their games, running around, probably longing to kick that football with them, but never been able to. Probably grew up as a teenager, would watch all his friends, you know, getting ready to go out and, you know, getting ready to impress, and you know, because they're on the pull and, and getting ready to go out and doing all this. And he's probably sat there feeling disadvantaged. A guy who never knows what it was. Maybe if he had kids to be able to go home and, 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 and I don't know, run around with his kids and roll around and, and chase them and never knew what it was and probably spent all his time looking at people who could do what he couldn't do. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame him this. There was probably something in there which was just, that just envied. Have you ever been there, Christian? I'm talking to some real folk today. You know, sometimes you look at somebody and certain things seem to happen and outwardly you smile and you say, oh, that's great news, I'm really pleased for you. But inwardly, you're thinking, I can't believe they got that job because I applied for it too. Don't they know that I'm better than she is? Don't they know I'm more qualified than she is? But outwardly, oh, I'm so pleased for you. Good one. Well done. Yeah, we'll just have to go out and catch up sometime. And oh, I'd really love to do that, you jammy sons. <laughs> and it wouldn't surprise me if this man was in a similar position. Probably felt a victim. Probably felt hard done by never had known the joy of just being in control of his own body. You get the idea of what we're talking about here. Join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2011. I don't know what situation you got, but if you can find it in the Word that there's a way out, the first thing you need to do is to conceive the Word, and now it's just a matter of time. You are on your way to manifestation. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Cardiff on the 26th and 27th of March. Manchester on the 7th and 8th of May, Nottingham on the 11th and 12th of June, Bradford on the 24th to the 26th of June, Birmingham on the 22nd to the 24th of July, and Sheffield on the 17th and 18th of September. You were born here. You were born sound. You were born to be the head and not the tail. You were born for everything you touch to turn to gold. You were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle and not be beneath but above only. Glory to God. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 0845602270. Email info at elshadaitoday.com or log on to our website at www.elshadaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2011. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. This man heard Paul speaking. Somebody say the first word. The first word. 
This man who had never ever experienced health and strength in his body to, to walk and run, about, run around, for the first time he heard a man speak and this was in now the situation that he faced. It was as if this was the first word. It must have been to do with healing. I can imagine Paul being there talking about, you know, by stripes you're healed. I can imagine Paul's doing that. And, and something in him must have triggered. Paul was speaking and the man heard him. And Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Look at that. Paul was speaking. Something happened in that man who probably heard hundreds of men like Paul speak every day. Probably heard those religious folks with their billboards walking around saying, the end of the world is nigh. And then another day, probably heard somebody just there shouting at him. And so this dude probably heard, he probably heard them all, he probably saw them all. All the visiting speakers and all the, all the, all the, all the entourages and, and, and probably even heard people talk about, oh, you're sick because you did something wrong. Your forefathers and you are, you are reaping the generational curse. People obsessed with the generational curse. Why can't we be obsessed with the blessing? Obsessed with something, a curse that maybe only goes to two or three generations, but the blessing lasts for a thousand generations. Probably heard them all, probably saw them all. Probably gave an offering to them all. Probably anointed himself with all the water from, from the Jordan or Neto. Probably did all that and nothing changed. But one day, a man spoke spoke and it's as if life came alive. That's, you know, the first word. You can hear some things and it's dead. That is not the first word. It becomes the first word when that word gets so big on the inside and you think, that's for me. And Paul is speaking. And this man, for the first time, he may have even heard the same words, but for the first time, it became faith to him. Somebody say the first word. He was in a desperate situation. But the first word came. It affected him. Suddenly, his faith is alive. The first word has come. That means this situation can be judged and I can live in the light of the last word. The first word. I can imagine him maybe thinking, maybe today is the first day I go home. Yes. Under my own steam. <laughs> yes. You know, there weren't cars back then, so there were no four by four. So maybe he was just saying, Maybe today, I think I can go home yeah. under the steam and the power of my two-by-twos. That's right. That's right. And the thing that triggered that was faith. You know, many Christians, when we pray for them, they come to God, like I was saying earlier, just desperate, just hopeful. They might as well go play the national lottery for all the good it's going to Well, fingers crossed. We don't believe in fingers crossed. Oh, touch wood. Maybe, maybe my number's up today. Maybe God's going to be good to me. Listen, if you could ever come to God with that attitude, you might as well just go sit down. Because God responds to faith. That's right. But faith comes by the word. And not just the word, but you've got to hear yes. the word. And that's why then suddenly the first word came and it was alive. And suddenly the man's thinking, this could be my day. How do I know I must have been thinking that? Because when Paul looked him in the eye, he could see instantly in him, this guy has faith to be made whole. So the first word came. Now this is the process. He's seeing that he had faith to be healed. So the word had come and there was faith. Now verse 10, Paul said with a loud voice. Now I don't know why it had to be a loud voice. It just had to be a loud voice. But anyway, he just said that in that instance, Paul said with a loud voice. Stand up straight on your feet. Notice the first word had come. Faith was there. And now remember we said if it's really faith, there will be corresponding action. So the word came. He said he could see the faith. And he knew that this was the moment. The word was alive. The first word had been spoken. And he said, stand on your feet. And at that moment, the man who had never walked was faced with a dilemma. Oh, I feel like this could be it. This could be it. 
And I, listen, I've been there to do with a different situation, but I've been there. I know, I know the struggle when you know God is saying, do this, but suddenly your flesh gets hold of you and your spirit wants to do this, but it's as if everything about you starts to look at the flesh and it's at that moment, suddenly your eye gets off the first word and starts listening to everybody else's voices. Oh, maybe if I do that, I look silly. Or maybe if I do that, <gasps> has anybody asked themselves this question? But if I do that, what if it doesn't work? Anybody ever been there? Yeah. Oh, listen, I've been there with bells on. Oh, oh I do that and, 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 and what, what if it wasn't God? What if it was the devil? Let me help you out with that. It is impossible to confuse God and the devil. I can, I can tell you honestly, the devil will never say anything that even looks remotely close to what God says. He can't. And so, he's there, thinking. The first word has come. This is my day to walk. I'm going to walk home by myself today. But if it's real faith, there'll be corresponding action. And so Paul said with a loud voice, stand up. And stand up straight on your feet. And look at the immediate response. And he leapt and he walked. How many of you know at that point he was healed? The first word was, I'm going to heal you. The last word was, after he had stood and he had leapt. The last word was the same as the first word. Except now, it was a living reality. Imagine a man who had never walked. This thing was so strong, he didn't stumble, he didn't get up gingerly, he leapt. He probably didn't even know what a leap was. And yet the power of God was so strong because he connected with the first word. And if he always connects with the first word, you will always receive the last word. And that was his manifestation. I'll close by saying this. The last word from God will always be a manifestation of the first word that he spoke. And in this year of rich fulfillment, because I don't know if you remember, this is the year of rich fulfillment. Regardless of what everything looks like, I'm just speaking for me and my physical household, you know, Hannah and my kids and me and my spiritual household here in El Shaddai Bradford. This is the year of rich fulfillment. Amen. Now, that's the first word. That's the first word. But the question is now, what are you going to do with that? Because in between the first word and the last word, there is a responsibility on every believer to remember that word and for faith to produce corresponding action. And it's the corresponding action that brings the result. Well, I need healing. Lord, I need healing. They've given me six months. Well, get yourself into the word. Find your first word. By his stripes, I am healed. Then that faith comes. Your corresponding action is this. I'm the righteousness of God. He's borne my sins. He's borne my sicknesses. I'm telling you, I will not leave this planet sick. I will leave this planet whole. And you, and you declare your healing every day. And then there'll come a day where that last word yes, will be the same as the first word. H-E-A-L-E-D, well, healed. Well, I'm struggling. I'm struggling financially. You get, you get into, you find that first word. I don't, whatever it is for you, whatever God quickens, but you've got to go to the first word. My God, who will meet all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. That thing gets so big. I know, pe I know people who came to this country with nothing. But they got a word and they connected. And I'm telling you now, God has just blessed them. And people will think, well, something, they must have had some kind of special advantage. Well, they did, but it's the same advantage you can have. It's right here. That's right. That's right. The word comes. Yes. You work the word. The faith comes. That light is there and you, and your corresponding action is there. And you do that and you sow and you bless and you, and you release your faith. And then suddenly you get to the place where the last word is the same as the first one. 
Join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2011. I don't know what situation you got, but if you can find it in the Word that there's a way out, the first thing you need to do is to conceive the Word, and now it's just a matter of time. You are on your way to manifestation. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Cardiff on the 26th and 27th of March. Manchester on the 7th and 8th of May, Nottingham on the 11th and 12th of June, Bradford on the 24th to the 26th of June, Birmingham on the 22nd to the 24th of July, and Sheffield on the 17th and 18th of September. You were born healed. You were born sound. You were born to be the head and not the tail. You were born for everything you touch to turn to gold. You were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle and not be beneath, but above only. Glory to God. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 0845602270. Email info at elshadaitoday.com or log on to our website at www.elshadaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2011. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. Thank you for watching Get Understanding. We trust you are blessed by the word. For more information about our ministry or to download our free podcast, log on to our website at www.elshadaitoday.com.